Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So if you guys are fans of the channel, you guys know I love GOG or Good Old Games. It actually helped influence the name of the channel. Now that I'm transitioning over to Linux as my primary gaming operating system, in fact it's going to be my primary operating system, Steam and Valve seem to really be in the lead over there. So my big question is, is Steam a lot better on Linux than GOG? And GOG is easy to set up and use through Lutris. I've shown you guys that in a few videos now. And I wanted to do a heads up because I own some games on Steam that I also own on GOG. I wanted to see for myself. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at here today. So the games that I'm going to be testing, we have Alan Wake. This is not the remastered. This is the original version. We have Batman Arkham Knight and then Call of Juarez Gunslinger. Great game, by the way, if you haven't played it. And then Darksiders War Master Edition and Singularity, another great first person shooter that really kind of went under the radar. Now, I have the exact same versions, so Arkham Knight and I have War Mastered for Darksiders here. So this is going to be apples to apples and we're just going to put them together side by side and see if there's really any difference. Alrighty guys, so we're kicking things off with Alan Wake, and as you can see here, well, they're both running very, very well. We have the 144 FPS lock-on. I use VSync because you really don't want to run uncapped frames anyway, even on Windows, but especially when you're first running a game on Linux because you want that extra headroom in terms of performance to go ahead and basically give the PC enough extra CPU and even sometimes GPU headroom to make sure to keep those uh, frame time spikes to a minimum. Okay, as you guys just saw there, we're seeing basically the same thing on both sides. Same spikes at virtually the same times. And for the most part, this is running very, very well. All right, so I do want to say, if you want to see more of this footage, I am going to put it up for members. The entire one hour clip that I did, uh, I am going to have that available to members and Patreon members. So if you are a member, you can get exclusive access for that. And if you want to help support the channel, please do so. That does help out, get stuff on hand so we can do this type of testing. And yeah, you get extra videos like that. But anyway, this is Batman Arkham Knight. I'm just running the canned benchmark so we can get a perfect side-by-side. -side. And you can see here, right here, we are getting the biggest frame time spike there is. Now, it looks like it's a little bit worse on Lutris, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. I would say, and there is evidence to show that uh, it's definitely running a little bit smoother on Steam. Now, as you can see, there's little spikes even when it looks like it's running smooth. That's just Batman Arkham Knight. We know it's not the best optimized. See, right there, we're kind of off tilt. One's a little bit further ahead than the other one. And right here, we're seeing more spikes over on Lutris, but we're still seeing some on Steam. This is probably the best example of Steam doing better. And the Vulcan processing of shaders on Arkham Knight on Steam took a long time. So if you're a member, you'll actually see the entire time because it's un uncut, unedited, uh, and you can see how long it actually took. I think it took about five minutes to process these shaders. But in reality, the performance difference between the two, I would say at this point is rather negligible. As the benchmark wraps up, everything's kind of starting to smooth out a bit. There's a few new shaders that load up here. Steam gets hit first, but that's because the uh, Lutris, the GOG version, is running a little bit behind. Same spike there at the end. Okay, so now we're moving on to Call of War as Gunslinger. Uh, this one I definitely couldn't get side by side. This is just the very beginning of the game um, because the Steam version has cloud saves and then obviously Lutris does not have cloud saves. That's another thing that'd be nice if GOG would work with them and allow the cloud saves. But as you guys are seeing here, we are getting small little micro stutters on both and they seem to be at virtually the same intervals. Now, like I said, the reason why the... A Lutris version won't be the same as because it's going to give me some of the tutorial prompts and we will get out of sync. And then, of course, we get into a gun battle and well, that's, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm actually playing the game. So it, it's just going to be slightly different. But this beginning part is virtually one to one. And honestly, as far as I can tell, they're both running about the same.
All right, so the next game up, this is Darksiders War Mastered Edition. Now, as you can tell, one, one of these things is not like the other. Now, as you'll notice, the frame time graphs are gonna be very similar. Once again, this is another game that it's not like a scripted on the rails thing, so it's not gonna be 100% like for like. But on Lutris, this was a little difficult for me to get up and running. So to resolve this issue, what I had to do was try different wine versions. And eventually uh, on the third try, I got it to work, but I only got it to work in uh, windowed mode. Now, granted, I could keep trying different versions, but I wanted to get this video up as fast as possible. So that is one of the fixes that you will need to do sometimes using things like Lutris and even in Steam, you need to use different Proton versions if your games won't run. So that's a big benefit. If you wanna see me do that in real time, that will be on the full video. Once again, that's for Patreon and YouTube members only. If you are a member on the Technomics podcast, you are also going to get access to that. As for War Mastered, as you can see, side by side, once we get to the same spot again, virtually the same. In fact, right here, I would argue we're actually probably looking better on Lutris, which I found a little strange. Typically, you'd figure, well, Steam's got the shader caching. Maybe it has something to do with it being in windowed mode. I don't know. All right, so now on to the final game. This is Singularity. This is a game that I talked about in my Wait Before You Linux video, because personally, I just didn't think that this game was super shader heavy or super demanding. I figured the processing power of a Ryzen 3700X would just be able to push right through it. It's not the case. And as you guys can see on the frame time graph, performance is roughly the same between Steam and Lutris once again. I would say that Steam might have a little edge, but it seems to be just those little minor blips aren't popping up as often, but those are actually almost unnoticeable. As right there, you can see, all the major blips seem to happen on both sides. All right, so I decided to fast forward a little bit through some of the intro cutscene part and get on in here. And I, like I said, this is what I found very interesting when I first started playing this on Linux is it's just about every couple of feet or something. This is the, my first experience with shader caching. So that's why I wanted to throw this in here. And as you can see, side by side, virtually at the same spots, we're getting basically the same frame time hit. Now, once again, Steam seems to have a little bit less of the little micro ones, like those little tiny ones, but those ones are unnoticeable, so those don't even really matter. For the most part, all of the bigger major ones seem to be about the same. So I wanted to throw this in here. This is Arkham Knight over on Lutris through GOG. This is the second run through. So I know I'm harping on the frame time caching and things like that, and that's, a big thing for anybody trying to come over from Windows, they need to understand that that's a real deal. But literally the second time, once those shaders are cached, they never need to be done again. So I wanted to show you what happens when you play the game again and you get Arkham Knight running as flawless as Arkham Knight can. I chose this because it's technically the newest and most demanding game of all the games tested. Alrighty guys, there you go. Between the two, it's not really much of a muchness at this point in time. Now, if you've messed with Steam on Linux, you know that virtually every game in your library gets updated almost every time you reload your operating system or reload Steam because they're constantly updating those Vulkan shaders 
to try to make it as perfect of an experience as possible, which is great. And in the future, they are going to be perfect. And this whole issue that we're talking about now won't exist. However, personally, I prefer GOG. I like those DRM free games and I'm going to continue to buy games there. So I wanted to see if I was really missing out by trying to go with GOG as my primary or keep that as my primary digital platform. Seems that's not that big of a de deal at this point in time. So all the games tested are available on GOG. I do have affiliate links down below. That's one way to support the channel and you get to play awesome games. And you also now know that they work on Linux. So for me personally, that's great news. I'm just gonna continue to buy games on my preferred platform. However, I do have a large library over on Steam. Might as well take advantage of that. And I'm gonna keep checking this out. And realistically, I would hope that the Lutris team sees what Valve is doing. This is kind of how this works anyway, with things like uh, Proton and then, you know, DXVK and Wine and all these different guys are doing different stuff for different spots, but they all pretty much collaborate. So I would assume that eventually the same feature will be coming over there. I saw something with um, Alan Wake when that installed. It's a D3D compiler, which wasn't part of the download. So they may already be doing it. That's just not something I'm super familiar with yet, so I don't want to speak to that. But I did see that when I installed Alan Wake. So if somebody does know if Lutris is doing this already, please let me know. That was the only game of these that showed that. So I didn't know if it was just part of Alan Wake's install or, or what. I'm not entirely sure. So eventually they will probably do it over on Lutris as well. Steam and Valve obviously have the big money and they will always be the first to enact these things. But it's coming, guys. That's another reason why I want to do this video. Two, three years down the road, I can look back and go, that's what Linux gets gaming was two or three years ago and there'll be tons of people going oh man that must have been rough yeah well these are kind of the early days but realistically it's not that bad now five or ten years ago it was really really rough so i suggest you guys check it out things are gonna get better and better all the time if you want to wait until everything's completely perfected that's cool too stick with windows i recommend windows 10 try to stay away from 11 but it's your choice you do what you want but I would say give Linux a shot because it's free. It costs you zero money. And honestly, this is going to be probably where things are going. Speaking of that, Celso from Cortex will be joining Paul and I later today on the Technomics podcast. And he pretty much agrees with me on that one. If you saw his last video, especially with NVIDIA now making ARM based CPUs and ARM equals Linux. Yes, there's Windows ARM, but it's not a real thing. Uh, nobody uses it. So Linux gaming is going to be a huge deal. It already is. It's just getting those final touches on there to where everything just works. We're not there yet, but if you want to be on the bleeding edge, Linux is it. So I suggest trying it out. Cost you no money. Uh, you do have to make a few sacrifices, as you saw in the video. You do have to learn some stuff. But for me, that's kind of fun. If you like tinkering, it's definitely going to be fun for you. If you don't want to deal with any of that, that's cool too. But alrighty, guys, if you want to chat about this sort of stuff, once again, if you want to join, you also get access to the Discord. You get access to these exclusive videos. And this will be a regular thing. When I do videos on the channel, I'm just going to record everything that I do. And then I'll cut it down for, you know, YouTube-sized videos. And then you'll gain access to the entirety uncut uh, if you are a member. So that's kind of a new-ish feature. I've done exclusive videos before, and we do the after hours uh, with Paul on the Technomics podcast. That's exclusive as well. So you gain access to that. So lots of cool stuff. I'm very excited, obviously, and I got a ton, a ton of videos to do. Uh, as you guys can see here, I got a different test bench up. That's another video I'm working on. So I'm really excited. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and I look forward to chatting with you guys on the live stream, the live podcast later today. Happy Easter and have a great day.